slides. I'll leave uh, the recording on. Okay, so those who have just joined in, uh, these are the questions. Those who are not on the WhatsApp groups, these are the questions that we are going to be uh, discussing. Uh, there are eight numbers, and we have combined the South and the East Africa, because most of the schools are doing South and East Africa. So these are the questions that we are going to be uh, discussing today. So those who have not yet received them, these questions were sent yesterday in our WhatsApp group. So you can check in there and then you'll be able to get them. Now, uh, teacher rest is going to get back, but we are going to push on with our discussion. So in our discussion, we have five to eight people that have come up to discuss. Okay, so we have, uh, let me, uh, before I go on patience, you have your hand raised, patience. Patients. Okay, okay, okay. Let me invite, okay, patients, we can lower our hand down. Yes, what about Liana? Okay, okay. Okay, let me invite uh, Emilia Joy to take us through her first number, and then we shall have uh, our patients come in next, and then we shall follow the order. Okay, Emilia Joy, you are welcome. Emilia Joy, are you on? Yes, teacher, I am. Okay, okay, okay. Go on and start the discussion. Uh, okay, good afternoon to you all. I'm going to be taking you to number six and part A says, what role did the chartered companies play in the colonization of East Africa? So we all know that chartered companies were the companies that used to handle the trade in East Africa, the companies of GECO, IBECO, those companies. And these companies did quite a number of activities that led to the colonization. So what I'm going to be simply doing is I'm going to be displaying an activity and I'll be explaining to you how these different activities led to the colonization of East Africa. Well, the first activity we have here is provided initial skilled labor. The chartered companies provided skilled labor, which was used, skilled manpower, the labor, that was used in the colonization or administration of their different areas of influence. The, the chartered, chartered companies financed the administration. This means that on behalf, okay, on the behalf of their different companies, for example, okay, sorry about that. On behalf of their Colonize it on their administrative, like their governments, the British governments, the different governments they came from Germany. These companies finance the administration, they put in money to favor the administration of East Africa.
unexplained is that they fought and defeated the rebellious societies. Now, for example, Ibiya Co fought Punyoro, the Nandi, the Maasai, and defeated them. Now, if you're defeated, you're practically now under me. I come and fight you, I win you. I'm above you, I'm as if you're superior. So these companies, they were for, when they fought and defeated the societies, they led, they as if colonized those areas for their governments. The Jiyako fought and defeated the Abshiri Arabs. Then they developed the transport and communication networks. Now the transport and communication networks made administration easy because if I can move from Gaza to Kampala easily, that means I can easily enforce what I want there. But if I can't move from Gaza to Kampala easily, that means I do not know what's going to happen in Kampala. Yes, I am administering in Gaza, but that does not mean I can easily administer in Kampala. The next point is they undertook businesses that generated funds. For example, they encouraged people to grow cash crops. For example, they encourage people to grow cash crops. The cash crops that these people grew, like the Africans grew at that moment, were sold and they got money. When they got money, these colonies sort of, these guys, the chartered company sort of collected funds and everything, and therefore they were able to generate funds, which are used in colonization. Our next point is that they constructed administrative posts and ports. Now, these people constructed different areas, for example, at Old Camp, in different areas, for example, at Old Kampala, in Naivasha, they would construct building structures where they would stay. And this would be their basis for colonization of these different places. So for example, at Old Kampala, I come from Old Kampala and go to, let me say, I had, let me say Masaka side, I can move from Old Kampala to Okono side, Jinja side, like the places they chose were as if places which could easily, would ease their administration. And the next point is they created security organs that improved on their security. These security organs, they created to improve on their security. They used them to fight um, the local people. For example, the private army of Ibeko was used in the colonization of Uganda. It was used to fight the, rebell the rebellious tribes in Uganda. Then they helped in the abolition of slave trade. When these people abolished slave trade, they got people they could colonize, people they could govern. So here they are abolishing slave trade, introducing legitimate trade, but it's to their benefit because if they let the slave trade continue, they don't have anyone they're going to govern because for one to be in power, they need someone as if below them or someone they're going to be governed. Then they protected the Christian missionaries. For example, Ibiaco protected the church missionary society. Now these missionaries whom they protected were also agents of colonization in their different ways. Like they softened our hearts so that we could easily like welcome the other guys who are coming, these other guys who are harsh and all. Then they signed treaties with the local people. Now, when they signed these different treaties, it just seemed like signing of treaties, but the treaties they signed put those areas where they signed them into power, like under the British, under that company. For example, Uganda and Chikui, they were put under IBEGO, but the Uganda seemed to be as if signing a trading treaty, but to them, it was more of a colonization treaty. Any questions before I continue?
Yes, Raymond. I would like her to talk more about related security organs because I've not understood anything yet there. I don't. I would like her to embark on creating the security organs. Which security organs did they create? Like an example. My example here is they had a private army as if. So this private army is what they use to fight the different societies. For example, if I don't know you have an army and I attack you, it makes it easier. I don't know, it makes it easier for you to win because I didn't expect, I didn't plan for that army that I have made on my way. You get it? Is that clear? Yes, that's clear. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. hello members. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, teacher. Mm, thank you, the discussant. Your presentation has been nice. Uh, I can come in partly to defend the point of the security organs. Um, maybe if we can't call it the security organ, we can say uh, that the chartered companies set up can I call them security headquarters? Uh, when I what what when I, what I mean by the head by, by the quarters or the security headquarters, we can quote the forts. Uh, we can quote the garrisons. Remember okay. they tell us it's they like... set up they set up Rabai Mpia, they set up old Kampala. Those were administration and the, blocks. Also provided guns that they used to use. All of that can be bended on the side of security. And remember when they provided them, these are the things that the colonizers utilized or used by the time they came. So uh, discussant, I would think you first answer the questions from the floor, then I come in, I supplement at once. Though I just wanted to come in to support a point that someone had asked. I'm seeing a question being a hand being raised by someone. Um, sorry about that. Um, Pauline, what's your question? Pauline? Take another person in the interest of time. We are time bad. Helen, what's your question? Okay. Helen? Okay, if we can't get to Helen, may we have patience? Some might have raised up their hands and they forgot them. Let's go to part B, then I come in at once. Time is against us. Teacher, they can't unmute. Oh, I think Mr. Kaziba has to do that. Try unmuting now. Is it possible? Yes. Teacher. Emily. Yes, please. Uh, I want more light on the point for undertook businesses that generated funds. Do you get when, me? Yes. When okay. we say that they undertook businesses that generated funds, I said, for example, they introduced cash crop growing. Now, when the Africans grew the cash crops, they would sell them to these companies. These companies would give the Africans money and the different businesses these Africans are doing as if these people were, were able to give the people money but the money they give the people 
they collected it in form of taxes. So I'm working to my areas where they were. Is that clear? Okay, thank you. Helen? So yeah, um, good afternoon. I just, I, I'm requesting yeah, for I some, I'm requesting for some um, re-explanation on the first point where you talked about provided initial skilled labor. Part of provided initial skilled labor, I said these people provided chartered companies. Which was used in the industry on the different areas of influence. Is that clear? Help this yeah, it is. Thank you. I would beg to first go to part B, then that's that's the procedure that we are going to use. We discuss part A and part B, then people come up with questions. Because now they're going to over ask that and then we shall need to move. Go to part B, then we ask at once. Let's first lower our hands. Are you the one discussing part B also? Hello? The discussion, please. Hello. Yes, Hello. Yes, Are you okay? Okay, okay. Yes, sorry about that. Um, I said, let me continue with part A. The chartered companies provided home government their home governments with information about Africa's economic potential. These different companies told their home government what East Africa was capable of, the different cash crops that could be grown in East Africa, the different things that they could get from East Africa. For example, the cash crops they could grow as if to get the money and therefore be able to get the funds. They gave those different reports about the activities that are occurring out here in East Africa. Then the next point is they called their home government to take over. Now, I be a Korean got bankrupt at some point and it could no longer manage the governing to govern East Africa. It could no longer manage to carry out the administration to pay the different officials and the different activities involved in administration. So therefore it called upon the British government to come and take over the places it was governing. And then that Traders only settled in areas with their economic interests. For example, these people would settle in areas, in areas that, like, for example, these people would settle in areas where they, they could, let me say, Cash crop growing was occurring. So this would make the people who are coming find it like I'm like trying to inquire which part are we on? Part B. They said that Angor eroded independence of so 
Sorry. Majana sebab ni dah uh. alat tutup keluar. Majana Can we hear someone taking us in question in part B of that question? Um, Emily, when discussing yes, part B again, are you then discussing part B again? Well, I think someone called Jeremy should do that. Bambi, you hurry, time is going and the questions are many. Is he present or not? Uh huh. I'm, I'm seeing someone raising up their hand. Are you then taking us through part B? Yes, please. Uh, teacher, rest, I think Emily, Emily, I can take it over. Mm. Emily, do that please in like five minutes, just to list those problems. Any problem they don't understand is a problem we are going to explain. Uh -huh. It's what we shall okay. explain. So as lack of capital or finance. Then there was external rivalry or competition from the different standard, from the different chartered companies. Then the lack of a developed transport system, which made their movement hard. Inefficiency, corruption, and mismanagement in the chartered companies. Opposition and internal resistance. There were several restrictions in the agreements they signed. For example, the agreement they signed with the Sultan of Zanzibar. And there was lack of home support. They lacked mineral resources, which they could export to and sell. They lacked the geographical knowledge of East Africa. There was hostility and opposition from the people of East Africa. They faced the challenge of language barrier. And there were, lastly, there was the problem of harsh climate. The question for part B is what were the problems faced by the Chattered companies. Teacher, that is it. Okay, now I'm going to make my observations uh, on part A. Uh, the other time when my network got disorganized, what I wanted to tell you is that. History these days is not the history of the other times. History is becoming complicated day by day. You need to know the steps and all the procedures that the examiners need for you to excel in this subject. On part A, endeavor to write an introduction. When a teacher has put 13 marks brackets, don't think that all the 13 marks are going to be for the answers that you're going to write. Mm -hmm. From 13, you have to minus two marks. And those two marks always are to go to the introduction. I had her explaining to us what trading companies were. Trading companies. You mentioned examples of those some of the trading orchard companies that came to East Africa. We had the German East African Company, that is the GECO and the IBECO, the Imperial British East African Company. You can even tell us when the IBECO was formed in 1888, then GECO in 1884. You can even go an extra mile and tell us how the IBECO much worked in Uganda and part of Kenya, then the GECO worked in Tanganyika. And at least to make sure if teacher needs two marks on part A, you can fidget and write 13, three points to stand in for the introduction. 
let the teacher pick his or her best two points. So that you don't lose those two marks. Then you get to know that the body I'm working or the body is now on 11 marks. I've already scored my two. I have the 11 here. Then these 11 are for the content. On part A, we don't give a conclusion. A conclusion is only given on part B. Then this number, why I put it there in these questions, it always looks to be a tricky question. Role of missionaries, role of chartered companies, role of the explorers or the geographers in the colonization. These guys didn't colonize us, the chartered companies. Neither did the geographers that I call the explorers colonize us. Neither did the missionaries colonize us, but we call them agents, middlemen to colonization. They just sent them to come and pave way for the other process of colonization that was going to force come. They, was, they were just agents to come and sweet talk the, the hearts of the Africans. So as you're writing a role that those people did the agents, make sure that that role is linked to colonization. Don't leave your point hanging. If I turn to the soldiers of Christ, I think when teacher says soldiers of Christ, you understand. Those are the missionaries. What did I do to pave way for the colonization? I would say they preached the word of God, which word softened the African hearts. That by the time the colonizers came, they found when the African hearts were good and softened, and they just welcomed the colonizers, saying our brothers and sisters in Christ have arrived. Because in the gospel, they had told us, everyone is your brother and everyone is your sister. When they saw the colonizers, they just welcomed them, not knowing they were selling the independences of their mother countries, or the independence of their mother countries. They told us how to read and write. By the time the colonizers came, an African would know how to read. An African would know how to write very well. If I turn to the, uh, and that's, that is the work of colonization. Because if I'm talking to a person who can write and read, my work is going to be very simple. If I talk about the explorers, which are sometimes nicknamed as the geographers, the likes of the Dr. David Livingstone, the likes of Henry Martin Stanley, the likes of John Speak, what did they do? I would say they exaggerated the wealth that East Africa had. Oh, East Africa has got minerals. East Africa has this. The climate is just nice. The, the resources which are, the, everything is so useful. By the time the colonizers came, even in that one alone, quickened up the process of colonization. Who doesn't want to come and share the wealth? I've already exaggerated what someone has. You have to hurry and take over what the, the person is talking about. It is, it quickened up the process of colonization. They sent messages indicating the, the peaceful places or kingdoms or areas and the tough places. By the time a colonizer came like to Uganda, he knew that the Baganda are peaceful, but the Banyoro are tough. So if we are going to go and annex the Banyoro or to conquer the Banyoro, people let's go knowing we are going to meet a tough society. So we need to go with fighting weapons. But as we are going to go to the Baganda, those are going to just welcome us. We don't need to overgo when we are panicking. Hence easing the work of colonization. But let us assume these agents had not come first. It means by the time the colonizers would come, they would just go and bang in a tough society and that society would give them headache. If I tend to, if I come up with just two points on chartered companies, look at these people. Mm -hmm. They also gave, gave information about the minerals in South Africa, in East Africa and how they looked. They signed the treaties with the African chiefs. And after signing these treaties, I come, I sign a treaty with you that you have allowed me 
to exploit the world, to be in your society. And after me signing an agreement with you, I will just tell my child people when they come, or my, my connoisseurs when they come, that that Kabaka of Buganda called Mutesa I, that king of Bunyoro, Kabalega, or any other, signed a treaty with me. And the, sign, the mere fact that you signed a treaty with me, it meant you accepted me in your society. So by the time the colonizers came, they depended on the already signed the treaties. I would just come, I say you signed a treaty with my company, implying you allowed my company to operate. And I'm part of that company. I've come now to take over. You had nowhere to deny that the other one was a company now for you, another class. No, the moment you signed, it was a clear sign that you surrendered. They built infrastructure like roads, railways, or railways. When the colonizers came, they found when the roads can be passed through or are passable. That if I wanted to go to, to Chiriandongo, or if I wanted to go to Mbale, the road to Mbale, my charity company already made that road. It was now just a smooth way for me to reach Mbale. I go colonize the people of Mbale. But just imagine if the colonizers had come, when the roads are impassable, how would they reach there? In the question, there was one question, but I'm answering now three related questions in that area. So note that. If you just write the points, they set up infrastructure, they expose the, the hostile and peaceful areas. Uh -uh, that is not linking to colonization because if you spread the gospel, does it mean colonize me? If you build a road, how is it related to colonization? You tell us the impact of that activity that either a charity company, either an explorer, either a missionary did. I expect you to pass that question in case it comes in your name. Whether missionaries, whether charity companies, whether explorers, just get to know, you have to bring out the impact of that. I'm going to bring in another related question because as I come in to supplement, I may end up discussing five numbers within one. That is a trick I had said. People love the question of missionaries so much. If today you name said part A, what were the activities of Christian missionaries? Part B, what were the effects of the Christian missionaries? I doubt if there is no any citizen who would miss that number. All of you, that would be your first question. Ah, missionaries now, way. Eh? Ah, that's what I need to do. But it's one of the most failed questions when it comes to marking. People don't distinguish an activity from an effect of the activity. What was the activity? One, missionaries built schools. Mention the examples of the schools. Mention Gaza High School, uh -huh. um, Mount St. Mary's Namagunga, mission like two or three. Those are the, that is an activity that they did. If we turn to an impact, that is part B. What were the impacts of the activities of the Christian missionaries? Some people go back and rewrite the same statement, missionaries built schools. But what is the impact of that? Illiteracy rates reduced. Yeah, yes. An impact. Illiteracy rates reduced as a result out of the schools that were built by the Christian missionaries. Missionaries built hospitals and don't say like in Zambia, Zambia is a village, Gayaza is a village. Mention the particular hospital, like St. Francis Hospital, Zambia. Town Mengo is a village. That is the activity. If I turn to the impact, health conditions in East Africa became better or improved as a result of the hospitals that were built by the Christian mission. When I'm dealing with an effect, I give what came about and an activity just helps me to bring that point at home. Mm -hmm. Elite healthy conditions improved. Why? Because missionaries had set up hospitals that treated the diseases of the people. People don't differentiate between an activity and an effect. I've also brought in that question. 
people are we clear or i'm in my own world can i get someone to talk to me are we together yes 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 teacher yes. Uh -huh. yes. we are covering like one top one one question has has taken us to over five alternative questions don't just bang in on activity of the missionaries and never to give fake mm. then let me pause in the 660 question there then we go to the next question in the in the seminar questions Pause. The one Wafarans also a bit limited to Christian was between me, uh, Protestants, was between the Catholics, the me, traditions, and the Muslim. Yes, sir. Uh, you can pose the question again. You were a bit breaking, so we did not get it clear. Okay. Um, saying that before I leave that zone, I want to bring in another related question that tomorrow we can find in the paper. And that, that, uh, that's the one get was I know you have covered that S reason, I'm not so sure. The one Wafaransa was, was these were religious was in Buganda. Was between the Protestants, Catholics, Muslims, and that you know that religion of the traditions. Some people call it witchcraft, but I don't know. But that is a religion that our ancestors used to believe in. Remember, these wars were in Buganda as a kingdom. I know the teachers have taught you the causes of these wars. Why I went into them, I just want to bring in a tricky part that makes you fail that question in exam. You know the causes? One, differences in preaching. Because the religious was, I'm not going to go over deep in it. I just want to bring up what I wanted to to show you that makes me feel that question. You look at differences, and that person meet herself. Look at the, how they used to offer. Catholics offer differently, Protestants differently, Muslims are offering differently, and that causes them. Look at the desire by the, the religious factions to win Kabaka's favors. Remember, the Protestants wanted Kabaka to be on their side. But Catholics are saying Kabaka is ours. Muslims are saying Kabaka is ours. Traditions are saying you people take away. Kabaka belongs to the traditions and many other causes that you have in your books. Party B is the deadly part on that why I brought in this topic. They always ask you how the religious wars affect the history of Uganda. Not in Uganda. Yet we know religious wars were in Uganda, but Uganda. Why? Anything that you're going to discuss, make sure Uganda. That is the trick behind. Some of us will read these questions in the past, read it to analyze the question and what the question I say. They are won by the Protestants 
We all know that. How do I link that answer to Uganda? They were won by the Protestants and the Protestantism became the state religion. In Uganda, it started after their victory in the religious wars. That the Protestantism became the state religion up to today. When they ask you which religion is Uganda, I would say Uganda is the Protestant state, though Uganda respects all religions, but by that too, conflicts emerged amongst these religious sections. Religious was like it or not, as much as we all believe in Jesus, that's the sign us an Anglican may not make it. That is some bit of a collision. Look at the way we go for is it what the the, the um like if they said today we are going to have. Uh, in, I think in uh, Catholics, they call it the blessed Eucharist. I don't know. Uh -huh. You're going to share the eating of the bread in church. Protestants, I see them putting their hands. Catholics, the priest would come and put it into direct into your mouth. Leave alone the COVID pandemic that disorganizes everything in church. There are many things different. This was time. School, but schools in Uganda, you'll find in Namagunga for Catholics. King's College Buddha for Protestants. Where do you think this thing came from? Narisosa for Muslims. They took that line. You find the others staunchly believing that this school is an Anglican school. It is started after religious wars. Hospital religion. You'll find the Chibuli Hospital for Muslims. Rubaga Hospital, typically Catholics. Mango Hospital, Protestants. Even political parties in Uganda were set up according to religious affiliations. DP strictly for Catholics. Uganda National Congress, UNC for Protestants. These things started as a result of the religious wars that took place in Uganda, specifically in Buganda. So read the question very well. Look at the effects that your teacher gave you in your book and say, if tomorrow you never tax direct onto Uganda, can I stand a chance of winning religious wars? I beg to stop there. Unless there is some burning question, but I love us to go to question two. Though after discussing question one, we have brought in like other five alternative questions, although they are not in our seminar questions. Back to you. If there is a question, ask question two. Hello. Yes, patience. Madam, uh, like your Madam, hello. Hmm. Yeah. Madam, hello. Patience, I can hear you. Like you've said in part C, we give a conclusion. Yeah. Conclusion, can you give for that question? For charity campaigns? Yes, in part B. I'll say in conclusion, and don't say in my conclusion. You're not a writer of history books. 
in a con in conclusion, in a conclusive remark, in a nutshell. In conclusion, the problems that affected the chartered companies were economic, some were political, others were geographical in nature. You may not bring in those things as they have been discussed above. No, you may not tamper with that. But problems can be economic, problems can be political, they can be social, they could, have, they could even have been geographical. If, it, if it, the question was effects, effects, most cases, they are positive yeah, and negative. Positive. Or if I see that the effects were mainly negative, I would say in conclusion, the effects were mainly negative. Just, just bring in something that can summarize your statement, what you have written, and don't mention points when you're turning to effects. But in conclusion, the problems included inadequate funds, conflicts, you repeat whatever you have written. Just get something that can summarize your impact, your, like your, your statement. And we are only concluding part B. Don't go back and bring in even part A in conclusion. You know that the companies played a very important role and the problems also, uh -uh. just conclude part B. And then how, how do we start part B, teacher? You because you said there is no an introduction. You can write an opening statement. The followings were the problems that charity companies faced. You begin giving us those problems. Don't write the problems and underline. There you'll be like writing your own notes in your own book. This is an exam. Just write an opening statement. Hope I'm clear there. Hope I'm clear there. Thank you, madam. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh -huh. Who is taking us in question two, please, in the interest of time? Thank you, Emily, for that good presentation. Then can we get another person? Teresa, we have patience. Yes. But let her move away from the noisy place. Patience. Maybe she's trying to share her screen. Share her screen. Patience, time, 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 time. Maybe if the screen is failing, she can just discuss. Mr. Kazuo, maybe we pick another person, then patients will come in later. Okay. Okay. Mm. Yes. Any other person willing to discuss? Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. Patience, have your video off. Okay, yes, precious. Okay. Okay. Yes, precious, you are ready? Yes, 
Precious. Precious. Okay, sir, thank you. So, I'm going to discuss number one, number two of South Africa. Number one A is describe the migration and settlement of the sons into South Africa. So, we know that the sons are part of the group called the Khoisan, the Khoisan family, which, which came. Which Sorry? Any question? Okay. Sorry, I can't get you. Um, Shomukisha, I think it was Mr. just Kazuba, I don't know someone else's about... ma mic. Then oh. you can continue. Oh. There was no one asking a question. Okay. So it described the migration and settlement of the sun into South Africa. Their origin is not clearly known, but what is agreed is that they migrated from Central Africa, settled into Tanganyika, and finally into South Africa. Tanganyika is representing East Africa, and when they ask us to give evidence, it's evidenced by the similar rock paintings in East and South Africa. Their early occupation is evidenced by the remains of their Stone Age implements, rock paintings and em engraving, engravings that have been found in many parts of South Africa. On arrival in South Africa, they occupied areas of the Maraland and Batlabin. They later settled around. So when they first entered South Africa, from where they had came from, from their original land, they first, first settled in Damarand and Batlabin. Just like when you enter Uganda, when you come from abroad, you first settle somewhere for the first night, then that's where you come to sort out where you can mean to settle permanently. So these guys, they later settled around Brackenstein, Kadepo, Winterberg, and Brackenstein Ridge. They also, so these were the highlands. They, they also settled near K, Val, and Tegula Rift Valleys, Free Estate, and Trust K. Others settled in Tanti districts of present day Botswana. They were later pushed into, they were later pushed into. They were later pushed into drier areas of Nambia Desert by the stronger Bantu. So these guys, when they came into South Africa, they spread into different parts of the group, different parts of South Africa. So when they came into South Africa, there's another group of people who came to occupy South Africa. These were the Bantu. So when you know when new people come into an area, there's always a, a war, like they fight for land. So these guys overcame them and, and won them. So they were transferred. They were pushed into Nambia Desert by the stronger Bantu. Today, they are found in Nambia, Kalahari, and Angola, but small groups remained in the northern parts of the Cape. Any question? Hello?
Teacher. Hello. Yeah, madam, I was asking if there is any question from the fellow students. I'll first go to part B, then we supplement at once. Okay. So, part B is explain the way of life of the sun in South Africa. Most times, we students get confused when they ask of the way of life. The way of life is also the organization. So, it's like they're asking, explain the organization of the sun in in South Africa. So, socially and politically. So, we have started with the social organization. The family was very important in society because it formed the basic social unit. Just like any other family, the unit is a family either yours or a neighbors, that's what we call a social unit. The son lived in small communities consisting of 50 to 70 people. The son led a nomadic life, i.e., that is to say, they moved from place to place in search for wild game and fruits. Nomadic life means these guys didn't settle in one place. They moved from different places. It was just in, in their way of life. The girls around eight years could be married to boys of 13 to 14 years. They slept in caves and temporary shel shelters. Their caves were beautifully covered by the paintings of animals and on the wall. Remember in the introduction, they say these guys came, came they discovered that they had come from the other different places due to similar rock paintings. So this was one of their organization yeah the boys underwent an initiation dance so tested so for these guys the boys to be known that do those days it was it was like education they had first go a test just like to be promoted to the next class, you're always given examinations, right? So these guys were given tests of these, of these skills to test if they were ready to go into manhood. After marriage, after marriage ceremony, the husband joined the family of the bride first child. Remember, these guys married at a very young the, the boy at the rate of their own. Number eight is polygamy was common among the son, but produced few children due to their nomadic way of life. Because of the movement from different places, Having many children would become so hard for them. So they used to produce few children. And they used to marry many women. It's like a sign of pride. Just like even in our history, the Uganda or anywhere in Africa, if a man has many women those days, I don't think it's now there now, but I remember those days, if a man had more women, it was like a sign of pride. So... The next point is, they use traditional healing methods. In fact, the parents passed the knowledge of traditional medicine to the young ones. It was, they had to teach their young ones the medicine, the traditional healing medicines, just like any of us. I guess each one of us has a way, first aid a parent could have given you. Like when they tell you, if you cut yourself, get this, put that, yeah. Or get like if you cut yourself, get blackjack. Make sure you get that juice and put on your cut to prevent the clotting, the the blood flow. So that's what they used to do. Number ten is the son believed in God called Kagen. 
Kagen was also known as Thora or Hish. Kagen is regarded as the creator, and therefore prayers were made to him, were made to him for blessings. Just like Debanyoro believed in Rohanga, Debaganda believed in Katonda, these guys, the sun, believe in God called Kagen. 11. The praying matis was highly respected among the sun, for it represented fortune and good luck. So in these people's homelands, though the sun, if they see a praying matis, it's a sign of fortune and good luck. Just like her now. If okay, let's guess if you did a angel, I guess. There, I always hear that if you see that totem that you're, you're represented by, it's a sign of fortune and good luck. Number 12 of is the sun were great artists. For example, they decorated walls of their caves with pictures of animals and daily experiences. These guys had love for art. Wherever they went, they would make sure they bring, they, they write, they draw down their daily experiences onto their houses, onto the walls of their houses. The sun lived by dancing. I beg your pardon. The sun lived by dancing. They dance at new and full moon. And they dance at the dance, hunters prayed for good fortune in hunting. So these people loved dancing and they used to dance at the new and full moon. During these dances, the hunters made sure they pray for good fortune in hunting because these guys were hunters. Number 14 is the most important social ceremony among the sun was the sacrifice to the rain because they lived in drier areas. Because they lived in which meter? I'm sure I can't. And I'm using the phone, so tell them to call me. The sun lived by the most important social ceremony among the sun was the sacrifice to the rain because they lived in drier areas. So these guys prayed for rain because they lived in dry, just like if it's like, let me give an example. If it's you living in a drier area without water, wouldn't you pray to God to give you the water? Number 15 is, they celebrated important days in life, such as the birth at puberty, marriage, and death. On such days, animals were slaughtered or killed. So these days were celebrated. It's like introducing these people into another stage of life. Just like when a baby is born, they celebrate. When you enter puberty, yeah, and still in Uganda, I guess there are some people, when you clock 13, that's a journey into your teenage age, clocking to 20, they celebrate. You're now going into adulthood. And death, they used to celebrate these events. The economic organization are the sun were great hunters. They lived by hunting wild animals. In fact, they kept no animals except their hunting dogs. The hunters used to use bows and poisoned arrows for small animals and large animals. We called the hunt, beg your pardon, the hunters used bows and poisoned arrows for small an, animals. And the large animals, like zebras, elephants, were caught by digging pits. They also domesticated, kept dog, do, they also domesticated, stroke, kept dogs to help them in hunting. Number. <laughs> Number number seventeen is number eighteen is food gathering was also common among the sun to supplement wild supplement wild game. 
women gathered fruits, honey, locusts, and roots to en enrich their diet. So the men went hunting and the women went for food gathering. This is the way how these guys were socially organized in, in gender. Fish was caught in rivers like K to Somo, Humazimoru, and together to supplement on their diet. The sun, the sun also raided their neighbors like the Koi Koi and I beg your pardon. The sun also raided their neighbors like the Koi Koi for cattle at times. So these, these guys, the sun, just like the Kejongs, raided their neighbors, for which their neighbors were the Koi Koi. And they, they raided their cattle. 21 is trade was also carried among the sun as they mainly exchanged goods for goods. So the exchange for goods for exchange of goods for goods is known as butter trade. So these people, the sun, carried out butter trade among them and their neighbors. 22 is the wealth of the sun consisted of the hunt of the hunting dogs, hunting grounds, and temporary shelters. So this was these mentioned things, the hunting dogs, hunting grounds, and temporary shelters where the sun is wealth and richness. Number 23 is land among the sun was communally was communally owned as no one could do individually own land. When they say communally owned, this land belonged to the community and no individual. Just like when they say Bali, if they say like people living in Bali and they tell us this land is a communal land, no one in the district had to claim land as their own, as their own, so it belonged to society. The political organizations are, they had no centralized systems of government. Instead, the administrative work was done by the headman in each settlement. The headman was assisted by the council of leaders. The headman was the head of the farm because these people remember they lived in groups of 50 to 77, 70, for which this had to be clan mates. So the elder in the clan would be given the title of the headman. So the headman was assisted by the council of leaders, of elders. So these are now the following elders the second eldest, the third eldest, so those were the assistant council, those were the assistant headmen, the council of elders. The work of the head, headman was to put in practice what was decided by the council of elders. 27, council meetings were held on a regular basis and were open to all adult males in society. So this meant women had no say in leadership in the Sunnis community. The youth were responsible for the security of their society, and in time of food shortages, they raided their neighbors. So the youth, beginning from that age of youth, 12 onwards, these guys had a responsibility of security. They had to protect and guard their their families, their fellow society members. And in times of hunger, they had to go and right their neighbors. So that's why I thought the sun, we get the other point of the sun riding their neighbors, this point 20 on, on economic. That's where we get that point of riding their neighbors. 
So number 20, number 20, 29, the sun were friendly to the outsiders unless attacked or their hunting grounds interfered with. If we are to remember this sun with, with, the, with the other our part of that group of people who welcomed the Dutch during the accidental wreckage. Yeah, so I'm done with number one. It does anybody have a question? Madam, teacher. Hello. Madam, I can't get you. Teacher. Anybody? Hello? I'm seeing Daniela. Yes. The hand to you, teacher. I'm seeing a hand of Daniela, please. I think she's posing the question to you. Yes. Okay, madam. Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, madam. People, madam. can you hear me? Hello, do you hear me? Loud and clear, madam. Madam, we can hear you. Madam. I'm saying three hands, I don't hear anything. Hello, members. Can you hear me now? Precious, can you get me? Yes, a bit okay now, teacher. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh -huh. I appreciate so much that teacher who has discussed that number. I had someone talking history as if it's me for that presentation and for that good discussion. You have made my work so easy on this question. But uh, people, I'm going to combine three topics or four in one, all subtopics. And that is the migration zone in South Africa. And in East Africa, it would cross or it will cross. If today we are to reasons for migration of any group, for example, migration of the Sunny, migration of the Bantu, migration of the Luas. Make sure you look at the causes of that migration. The way that these guys had in their cradle land that later forced them to leave. Mm. 
a push that is what they call a pushing something behind is pushing you to leave i feel i cannot stay teacher i need to go the situation or the conditions that i'm undergoing through cannot enable me to stay teacher could you give us an example external conflicts where in the cradle land where these people are staying internal conflicts among us themselves i'm fighting with my own people i feel i need to disperse and i go away from them increase in population we are increase increasing day by day survival is becoming a problem all of that will force the members to leave that is what we call a pushing factor not that one in east africa and in south africa something causes of migration must be pushing factors then the opposite of pushing where the pulling factors pulling factors where the attractions that these guys were going to find in a new area where they were going for example if i ask you why did the luo leave their cradle land and come to east africa you will tell me they were looking uh, for like the sparsely populated areas, maybe because these ones, if they are highly populated, they are looking for pasture and water. But my question is, who told them that where they were going there was pasture and water? They had never reached those places. How can you support the fact that where they were supposed to go, all the bantu were looking for fertile soils? Who tells you that where the bantu were going, fertile soils were there? That's why we don't want you to quote the attractions in the new places. Tell us what was bad in the old place and you show us that bad thing pushed them to migrate. In fertile soils within their cradle land, maybe the Bound to, to migrate and look for fertile soils eh? Eh? because of this unbearable situation of the infertile soils they said let us migrate we shall find good soils in the new place where we are going increase in population is forcing these people to go maybe in the new land where we shall go we shall find when the people are not so many then we shall survive there I think I've put the causes at home. It is not the question that was asked, but tomorrow it will be part A. Explain the causes of the Luo. Explain the causes of the Bantu migration. Explain the causes of any group. That will be a question tomorrow. And it will be an area that they can ask you to answer. Then it too, um, in case, Part B is the migration and settlement. In most cases, the migration and settlement, I love you to tell us how the migration went by. This is what we asked in this question, the migration and settlement of the Sani. The teacher brought out this, this the discussant who was our teacher then, brought out this question very well. But in most cases, for you to discuss the migration and settlement, it will be better to accompany your, your answers with who those people were. That's like how she said, they, these were the earliest peoples of South Africa. They were known by various names in South Africa. They were the Tours of South Africa, the Rowers of South Africa, the Bushmen of South Africa. In terms of color, they were brown, yellowish skinned. In terms of size, the sun were very short. They spoke a language full of click, click, clicks. Then I come up because the examiner has asked me migration and settlement. I said the migration and settlement of this people is not, was not, is not so clear to historians. But it is said as much as the, the, the sources of history didn't come out with a clear version. But it is said they might have come from either East or, East or Central Africa. Then because it's migration 
and let us settlement. You then tell us the places where they settled when they reached South Africa. On reaching South Africa, the sun is settled around rivers, like a river K, river Bow, river fish. They went to provinces like a trans K, Transvaal, Cape Colony. They went to mountains, you tell us. As they were entering, they were divided into the northern, the southern, and maybe the eastern. Sunny. Depending on the direction they were taking. Teacher, do you know that there are some courses that are very long? I know. And in most cases, in brackets, they have. But this is my humble request to you. Even if the course is very long, make sure that at least you mention any part, like if, like now, if I'm to talk about the laws, I'll find that among the law, there was a group under Gipiri. There was a group under Labongo. From there, I see there are some laws who took the side of King. Yeah, the Joker Joker. The... So if you're in the paper, I may not over talk all of the information about Gipiri, but I can talk about Gipili's group. I always tell my students and you my good students, if the bracketer has got 13 points, people don't write 13. Go an extra mile if time allows and write 18 points. Leave four points for the teacher, you know? That if the teacher is picking, at least the 14, I'll get them. Or I've written 18, let the teacher pick his best 14 points. Don't limit your chances. Because a candidate who is yearning for a D1 in history, his intention is I have to get all the points, the, the max. Not saying 13, I've got eight out of 13. No, struggle for the whole 13 out of 13. You're not so sure if all the 13 points you have jotted down are right. That's why you have to put in that excess points. And so let me put in some supplements so that if the other are not right, the teacher will take this one. So I would think out of Gipiri's group, I can write four, five points. Let pick, the teacher pick. I go to Labongo, five points. I go, I talk about even to, about the other lures. If it's Bantu, how can I talk about the Interacastrian Bantu? How can I talk about all other groups of Bantu? So that I make the course full. If it comes to Koi Koi, I'll first mention who the Koi Koi were. I then mention the different places where they went. On reaching South Africa, where did they go? After me talking about this, were the second occupants in South Africa, also being brown in color, also being somehow tall. I, I, I mentioned the fact that they also spoke a click sound. On entering South Africa, they entered as the Gona, the Nama, Kochokwa Koi Koi, the Kurana Koi Koi. I then mentioned the places where they went. Courses look to be awkward and courses sometimes look to be hard. But once given a time, or once given time, they can be easy and you can excel in them. If the question on courses is part B, teacher, how do we conclude courses? I can say in conclusion, the Bantu started their migration at different times. And indeed, we all agree. The migration started at different times. They took different directions. We all know that. They were led by different people. We all know that. And on reaching where they were going, they settled in different places. That would have summarized that these people moved at different times under different leaders, settled in different places, and were led by different people. Or oh, they reached at different times. Because you can't tell me that all these guys or all these people reached at the same time. No, they didn't. If it comes to way of life, teacher, what is way of life? Way of life is social, political, and economic. If the examiner has been so specific, describe the social, political, and economic organization of any society. Also, you be specific. 
because also the teacher distingu distinguished his question into political, social, and economic. But teacher, how can I know that this point goes under economic and this one goes under political? Political organization ever deals with things concerning leadership. Things dealing with army, all that is political. I can't expect you to come and tell me Buganda was, was uh, the Buganda depended on agriculture. When I've asked you political, I would expect answers that Buganda was a centralized kingdom led by a king called Kabaka. Kabaka was highly respected among the Buganda. I would expect such answers. And a political look at the hierarchy of leading. The, the ruling bodies like the Luchiko, or Kurata among the Batoro. Eh? You come up and tell us, how did they lead? Economic, we are dealing with economic activities only. They were hunters, iron smelters. They did fishing. Social, what did they believe during their leisure time? I mean, what did they do during their leisure time? And what did they believe in? The small gods are under social. The marriage character is under social. They were polygamous, though monogam allowed. They used to produce few children, believed in life after death, sacrificed to the gods. They did well, maybe board games. That is all leisure. And what the beliefs they believed in, that is social. But when maybe the teacher says way of life and does not specify, and you're not so sure, does this one go under political, this one goes under social, you can end up just writing and then the teacher sorts himself. But if again you're sure, you can distribute them. So I thank the teacher who has discussed, and I hope I've also supplemented well. We have gone into migrations, at the same time, part of kingdoms. That's why I brought in the way of life. And the most cases, way of life touches the kingdom, Buganda kingdom, Bunyoro kingdom, any kingdom that can be asked. Unless there is a burning question, but we can use the remaining 20 minutes to at least brainstorm another third question. I'm seeing a hand, Manuela and Daniela, you have questions, I guess. Let me start with Daniela because her hand has been so uh, has been up ever since I started supplementing. Daniela, please unmute and ask. I don't know, I can't get them. Mr. Kaziba, I don't know why they cannot speak out oh we need to unmute we need to and yes uh which person have you chosen teacher daniela first daniela unmute um, teacher, I, mean, uh, mm. I wanted there's a part about the son that Precious was talking about i wanted to say that their strength about their Strength coming from that about their wealth coming from the domes they had, something like that. About their wealth coming from about their wealth coming from the dogs, I think. It was about the sun. Precious was talking about it. This cassant, are you on? Yes. Uh -huh. Can you support your point? So, like, what means like this guy is very bad. Right now, you learn a little bit of now. If you're not, as you you're not, 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 you're 
are not clear and if I, I i had the point i would have defended it but i i am not here i've not really got it well from the, the person asking that's why i pose it back to you i don't know she said the wolf came from the dogs <laughs> We are trying to hear you, but you're not clear. Your notes. Yeah, madam, this is what she wanted. Hmm. Oh, the wealth it consisted of the hunting dog. Are you going to supplement the yeah, that one. What is their meaning here? Madam, let me try to give out. Okay, okay. Yeah, what the meaning is, this guy is the wealth of the sun consisted of the hunting dogs, hunting grounds, and temporary shelters. Remember, there is a point where we had they had no issue with anybody except when they go to, when they temper with their temporary shelters, hunting grounds, and the dogs. Just mm. like you. Let me give an example. Your, your mom's priority. If anybody tempers to do any harm to you, your mom would act negatively towards that, that person. Your, your mom's wealth and priority. So so to the sun, their wealth and priority were the hunting dogs, hunting grounds, and temporary shelters. But the land was a communal, communal property. It wasn't individual. I guess I've tried to explain in a way that I can. And, and, and whenever they would look at their hunting grounds, because we know they were hunters and they depended on the, 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 the food that was hunted. Someone would feel proud, like how they used to tell us that people long ago, some of them, their wealth was the number of children that they had, the cows that they had. If I have 200 cows, I feel I'm strong. A hunting dog, because they used to go with it to hunt. That is why it became a source of wealth. Uh -huh. Another person asking, please, in the interest of time. In the interest of time. Any other? Uh huh, praise. Praise and mute. Praise and mute. Mr. Kaziba, could you help Praise to unmute and Pauline? Maybe Praise has even moved off. Then Pauline. Pauline, unmute. Uh, teacher, do you hear me? Mm, I can. Teacher, my, my request was, like you had said, when we are giving, when we are giving the migration, we try to cover it to cover up everything. But my request was for the conquest. When we look at the Portuguese conquest, it's too long. How can I shorten that? Then also for the steps taken to abolish slave trade. I'm sorry, I'm off topic, but I was just requesting to help me with that. Then also for conclusion, like for concluding the migration, can I say in conclusion, the migration was slow and, was slow and gradual. Yes, you can. You can say slow and gradual, but again, Pauline, you didn't attend the last time his lesson. We summarized the Portuguese conquest. And, I, and I, after the end of that lesson, people were rejoicing. Now I don't know how I'm going to go back and explain what I explained last time. But one thing, I'm just going to make a comment, then contact one of the persons who attended last time's lesson. We said a Portuguese conquest is the story number. 
and it's not long. You never need three things, or your teacher at school needs three things. It, she needs the year for the conquest. A person who did that very act in that year and the event that took place that in 1498, that is the year. Who came? Vasco da Gama. What had da Gama come to do? The event to find a sea route to India. Oh. A slave trade. I need to quote a year. An activity that took place. What was done? Those are procedural numbers that I encourage you to do if you know them. That in 1499, he went back to check the findings and the reports. Who was that? Vasco da Gama. We spent a lot of time on that number that we even got the tricks of remembering those guys' names. We came up with a formula. That formula, people have it. Very vice president visited Rwanda last Friday to attend a dinner evening. People know that now. The very vice president, each facilitator of each word that teacher is speaking, represented a name of a personality who came. Then we got a way of solving. I don't know if Mr. Kazba made that recording. We'll get a way of posting it to the members. They listen to that voice the way I arranged the Portuguese conquest. If that recording is still there, I don't know. You can post it to them and they get to know. By the end of that lesson, we saw the Portuguese conquest becoming a food to eat. And at this moment, I want to pause in something. Though, I know we are very much scattered that we are coming from different schools. There is a book that I have. Acronyms mean. It has short words that summarizes the much and the hard topics that we know in history. That you find migrations, I have the way I summarize them. I got resistances, I draw a table, I put in even the form of the rebellions very quickly. Uh -huh. I go to particular topics. And in those particular topics, I go put, uh, like I have a way, because when you look at my table that is talking about the earliest peoples in South Africa, it has got a simple way how I summarize them. The same table, the same table we talk about the koi koi, it will talk about the sunny, it will talk about the. That table summarizes everything. The book combines East Africa and South Africa. But I don't know how people can access it, but I have it and it's selling 20,000. Even all those formula, the, the formula that I've talked about for Portuguese is there. I have a table that when you read that table, you read the koi koi, you read the sun, you read the bantu, you read the poison at once. You can read their migrations, who are they in that one table and everything is at home. But I don't know the way to access that book. Because it, I've, I've not taken it. It is not in any bookshop. Just a and I'm not, I don't think I can distribute it in the, in the what? In the bookshops. That's why even if you go look for it somewhere, you may not get it. That's the problem now. It's the math work that you look at. Uh-huh. Any other question? Okay, uh, teacher Resti. Okay, we have yes. Shai, Shai ask. Mm. 
Madam, I just request you to send me your words. My WhatsApp number. I think, I don't know, Mr. Kazwa, can't they get it from here or they cannot access it? I read it for them. Or you can read it for them. It is 0782, 0782, 12 of 1952. 0782, 0782, 12 of 1952. That is my WhatsApp number. Uh-huh. Any other with a question? I don't know as if we are having seven minutes. I yes, uh, we can have uh, someone was asking how do we talk about relationships? For example, relation between the sun and the bantu. How do they relate? Okay. Some people think that relationships and differences, but they are known. If someone sets a question and say, how does the sun relate with the Bantu? My relationship with you may be negative. Now, whenever they talk about you, I even jeer, I say, I hate her. I hate that lady meaning my relationship with that lady is my relationship with you may be totally like very nice oh i love that gentleman i love that lady it is good 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 my relationship at first i didn't know that you were a good person i used to hate you but when i went on in, i realized you're so nice I had to change my attitude. And lastly, my relationship with you can first be good, thinking you're very nice. But let I go to know you a person who can carry out rumor mongering like nothing. I started hating It seems uh, we have lost teacher Resty. Okay. It seems we have lost teacher Resty, and I'm seeing very many hands up raised. Okay. Okay. Can let me unmute a few. Uh, okay. Anthony, Anthony, unmute. Anthony, what do you have to say? Okay, Charity, unmute. Charity, you are not unmute. Yes, Charity? I wanted to know, eh? Mm. I wanted to know, was it only the son who belonged to the Koisan family? 
Okay. Uh, anyone who can give us an answer? Let me check out. Okay, teacher rest, are you back? Okay, teacher rest is not yet back. Okay. 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 Anyone who can give us an answer? Let me ask Daniela. Ask. Um, yeah. Yes. Me, yeah, I had a question about the a few. Okay. Okay. So, okay. We can hear you, but I'm going to ask you. Uh, we shall have another. Those having some questions. We shall organize uh, another session. Uh, we are going to see, I will look at the timetable, but at the infinite bit of it, most of you are going back, um, I think this week. So we may not be able to do a lot, but in case you have any question, uh, you have gotten a uh, teacher rest's number, and also those who are on the WhatsApp groups, you, you, she's there on all those WhatsApp groups. Uh, we shall, you will post your questions to her and she'll be able to answer. Otherwise, allow me that to end here our session because we are having another class. I want to thank all those uh, that have presented. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my prayer now is that let's go on and complete all those questions that were sent in your WhatsApp group. So go on and complete all those questions that were sent in your whatsapp group make sure you complete all of them and uh, such that uh, we are ready so uh would also in case you finish feel free to send in your answers for the teacher to look at them and as well you can uh share you can shoot uh, a small video of you explaining some of those points in number and then we can upload it for your friends to be able to watch it at a later time otherwise i want to thank you so much uh, for joining in uh, allow me to wish you a good evening. Let's meet tomorrow for the physics seminar. And tomorrow we shall also have uh, a quiz, an online quiz that we shall do uh, during the seminar. So come ready. Uh, those who are going to present tomorrow, make sure that you hand in your solutions uh, or your work uh, before uh, tomorrow meeting. Otherwise, thank you so much and have a lovely day, everyone. Yes. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye everyone. Thank you so much bye, for attending. Bye, Sam. Have a good day. Bye. 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 bye.